Okay, we have the board, we have power. Next up is the clock that will drive all the components to perform an action. So this is step three in the assembly manual. Let's see what we need. We need a crystal, Y1. We need three capacitors, 47 picofarad. One mega ohm resistor, uh, brown, black, green. A one kilo ohm resistor, brown, black, red. And one of the chips. And as you can see here, the clock circuit is over here. The chip is a 7404 and it's here on the corresponding location. And I'll double check to see if it's an 04. Yes, it is. So let's put in the components. Um, let's start with the uh, capacitors. Again, the capacitors can be soldered in either way. These ones are a little bit tinier than the 40 that we did before. And these are a bit different, they are smaller and they go in all the way onto the board. So the trick is the same, we insert them on the front. Also I advise you to stay away from the fumes that come from the soldering. Even if you have lead free solder, actually the lead in, um, in the leaded solder does not evaporate. So that's not what you're breathing in. It's all the additions to the solder that you inhale and they are not very good for your health. I mean you won't die but if you can prevent it, prevent it. So there's the clock generator. That's the actual crystal that resonates. And I use the same trick, a little bit of solder, make sure it is incorrectly and then solder it on both sides. Next to the crystal are two resistors. And the board also shows you how many ohms they should be. Alright, and now we come to the IC. Now the thing is that if they are new, they don't fit into the holes. So the pins are not straight, but they are bent. So we need to bend them in the correct position. So if you have a table, you can put it on the table and bend the pins to be straight. What you can also do is insert it on one side and then carefully push down the other side so they all fit. So after you've bent the pins it should fit and the ICs should be, uh, be inserted in the correct position. So there's a notch on top of them and this should match the notch that's drawn on the PCB. Now carefully insert the IC, make sure that all the pins are correctly in. 
And now the problem is to solder this without the IC falling out. So we cannot bend the pins, they're too short. But what I can do is uh, I hold the pin, hold the solder in the same hand or use a special device and solder two opposite pins. Double check. It's on the PCB, it's the right way around, and now we can solder all the remaining ones. So once you've soldered the IC, double check the orientation, check all the solder joints and since the pins are quite close together make sure that they do not touch each other. Right, so this looks fine, there's no excess solder. Okay, so this should be a working clock circuit. Now we can test the clock circuit, the clock will generate a pulse signal, so it's on off on off. And because of this the the actual voltage will um, go to 5 volts and back to 0 volts and back to 5 volts. So half of the time it's 5 volts, half of the time it's 0 volts. So the average should be 2.5 volts, or actually 2. What we can do is measure that voltage that's coming out of there to see if the clock circuit is working. So we need to power it on, make sure there is no metal that would cause a shortcut. I use a power bank again to power it up and the power OK LED should be on. Again, if not, use a different power supply. Now, the clock might be working at this moment and to check we'll set the voltmeter to volts in direct current and we have built test pads that are uh, just underneath the middle of the board marked ground and clock one and if we test these points it should say 1.9 volts. It doesn't, the power led is off so apparently my yeah the power bank was was shut down. Let's try it again That's good. So if it's somewhere between one and a half, two and a half volts, you know that the clock is working. 